The idea of measuring the costs of quality has a long history. It goes back at least 65 years to the ideas of Joseph Duran. Since then, many others have discussed the importance of measuring these costs. Yet by 2009, fewer than 10% of companies actually track quality costs. In Principles of Quality Costs, this definition is offered. Quality costs represent the difference between the actual cost of a product or service and what the reduced cost would be if there were no possibility of substandard service, product failure, or manufacturing defects. There is a traditional and useful grouping for quality costs. The costs of poor quality appear in the cost from failures. The costs of good quality are the costs associated with catching or preventing defects. Let's explore these classifications a little deeper and look at them one at a time. External failure costs are the most expensive. They occur after a defective product has reached the customer or an incorrect service has been delivered. These are just a few of the many sources of costs associated with external failures. Clearly, customers will complain and be dissatisfied. There may be downtime on machines as you try to figure out what went wrong. As the word of quality problems spreads, you may lose market share. If you're producing for another business, they may impose penalties for bad quality. You may need to scrap or repair the defective material, and that may fall under warranty. Think about the cost that might incur if you have to recall a product after discovering a major quality problem. Not only is the recall expensive, but news coverage can cause major harm to the organization's reputation. Internal failure costs are a little bit better. They're still expensive, but at least the bad product or service did not reach the customer. Still, you will have the expense of sorting good from bad, retesting, rework, or scrap. You may have to change your design or your methods, and you're likely to experience lower yield. Remember the first pass and rolled throughput calculations that we did? Appraisal costs are all of the costs we incur in our efforts to detect errors or defects. We have to inspect, that's a given. In order to do this, we have to pay personnel and buy and maintain equipment. There's the cost in the time that it takes to perform incoming, in-process, final inspection and tests. Some of these tests may be destructive, so we may also lose material. Remember, though, that these are the costs of good quality. If our appraisal efforts catch a problem early in the process, we can stop before we've invested more money in that product. We just said that we have to do inspection. It is unavoidable. But over time, we might be able to reduce it. The final quality cost is prevention. These costs are often one time instead of ongoing costs. We may spend money to do capability studies, process control, and training. We can also use lean tools like mistake proofing and visual management to prevent errors and defects. Cost of poor quality is only part of the equation. Quality costs are not the cost of the quality organization. Any product or service that is not perfectly executed carries a cost. This applies equally to manufacturing and to service. The cl classifications that we just looked at only cover the most obvious costs. There are many hidden costs. For example, we often carry extra inventory to mask quality problems. We may lose sales and customers as well as new opportunities because of poor quality. So how good is good enough? Doesn't better quality cost too much at some point? A traditional view suggests that the op optimum level of quality is less than 100%. This graph shows various costs in the y-axis 
and the level of conformance in the right in the x axis as prevention and appraisal costs rise shown with the orange line failure costs decline shown with the red line at some point after these lines intersect the total cost shown in blue will begin to rise the idea here is that there's an optimal level of quality and when we reach that spending more just increases costs but there's a newer view. The more modern view suggests that the optimum level of quality is 100% good quality. In this model, the total costs continue to, to decline until we reach 100% good quality. The mix of these costs will change as an organization implements and matures a quality system. An organization just beginning a quality system will probably have very high external failure costs. In fact, that may be why they started their quality system. As they try to stop external failures, they will probably increase inspection, so appraisal costs will go up. Defects are still produced, but they're caught before they go to the customers, so external failures go down and internal failures may go up. This is still an improvement. As the organization continues to mature in its quality efforts, they will start to spend more on prevention. A robust system of prevention and appraisal will drive down the costs of both internal and external failures. As an organization continues to mature, they might focus even more on prevention. With better prevention methods in place, it may be able to reduce the scope or the frequency of inspection and reduce appraisal costs. Remember that some of the prevention costs, like error proofing, are one-time costs. 